Hello, everyone, and welcome to this free webinar or RNA sequencing for infectious diseases. Today's session will introduce you to RNA-seq data analysis and the upcoming online training program on RNA-seq data analysis, visualization, and biological interpretation. My name is Bipsha Biswas, and I'm the Omics Logic Community Manager responsible for daily interaction with thousands of users who are part of our bioinformatics community managed by PyBiotech. So now let me start by introducing the upcoming training program as well as the team. In today's webinar, we will review recent publications and data sets that demonstrate approaches to differential gene expression analysis, pathway mapping and single cell clustering to study inflammation response to infection. This transcriptomics program is the third phase of a six month program on bioinformatics for infectious diseases that started in January, 2021. The first part of the program focused on infectious diseases and the use of bioinformatics and big data for infectious disease research, diagnostics, as well as drug and vaccine development. One of the major focus of this program is to support ongoing research projects, which are being spearheaded by Dr. Anita Gansha and Dr. Adu's group at Noguchi and their collaborators who have a long history of research in Ghana and other countries in sub-Saharan Africa to track, monitor, diagnose, and study the spread of drug-resistant malaria, as well as identify novel approaches for vaccine design, as well as the interaction between malaria host vectors and pathogen to help conduct such research. The Omics Logic Genomics Program was the second phase that started on March 12, 2021. In this second phase of training, which is currently ongoing, participants are learning about concepts and analytical tools used to study genomic variation in infectious diseases. Each week, participants are meeting online to discuss various aspects of NGS data processing, genomic data analysis, and interpretation. So one of the major focus will be on the application of bioinformatics to malaria related research, where we will be looking at the efficacy of vaccines and drugs associated with resistance and the complexity of host pathogen vector interaction. For this purpose, our team has already prepared a number of research data repositories and databases to help the participants identify high impact data sets for analysis. And we will also discuss various applications of genomics to the study of SARS-CoV-2, where selective pressures on various proteins will lead to the emergence of new variants. Such changes are already being seen as a result of increased immunity, vaccination, and other host pathogen dynamics. So this program, which is the Omics Logic Transcriptomics, and starting on April 16th, we'll discuss the various aspects of RNA-seq analysis and how this field of bioinformatics continues to evolve in the context of infectious diseases. And now I want to launch a poll that you can see right on your screen. So this poll will help us know a little bit more about you and I will then continue with the program. So the poll has a few questions for everybody that we would like you to take. The first question is your interest in learning NGS data analysis. So if you want to gain a basic understanding of NGS, if you want to become an expert, if you want to work on a project on NGS data analysis, or you want to learn to help teach your own students. So you can fill in any of these four steps. The other question is, which area of research you want to apply NGS transcriptomic data analysis to? The first is infectious disease. The second is agriculture, third neuroscience, precision oncology, and others. 
So if you have any other areas that you would want to use RNA-seq for, or are interested in using and learning about RNA-seq, please put those areas down in the chats. We have only listed some of the major areas. You can also list other areas you're interested in working. For example, someone was asking about food. So if you're interested in areas like that, please put them down in the chat box as you're continuing to use this poll. The third question is how many time, how much time will you be able to dedicate for NGS data analysis training per week? So we just have an average here. Please feel free to comment or choose any of these uh, hours that are mentioned here. The last question is what NGS data analysis research you're familiar with? First is single cell transcriptomics, non-coding RNA, mRNA, you, or you are a beginner and would like to learn more. I will just keep this poll on for a minute and then go back to the presentation. And please continue to put in any other questions that you may have in the chat box while we have this poll live right now so that we can also learn more about you in case we have not covered those questions right here. So Sundas, if you have a question, uh, can you please put them down in the chat box? Thank you. So I would be ending the poll right now. I hope I'm not able to see the poll votes. I hope that Elia or Mohit, you can confirm that. Uh, yeah, the so currently about 80% have voted of the current participants. So uh, maybe just leave it for, you know, just one or two more minutes. Okay, uh, sure. Okay. Uh, yeah, Karim, so I will be able to share with you some research papers using TBioInfo. Give me just some time. So after I speak, I will be able to share with you. I will post it right on the chat box so that everybody can see the research papers published using TBA Info Portal. Thank you. Okay, it looks like we, we have most of the answers captured. Thank you so much, Ilya, for the confirmation. So I'm ending the poll here and continuing right now, what you see on the screen are some of the questions, like the answer to these questions that you have given to us. So when you have filled up the form to join this webinar, we asked you what is your own interest in learning about RNA-seq? So these are some of the replies that we have received. So these replies go as application of RNA-seq in infectious disease research, how to manage large omics data in transcriptomic analysis, getting a clarity on sequencing methods like Sanger and NGS for research and clinical applications, how to perform statistical differential and regression analysis, how to leverage bioinformatics to develop research projects and prepare them for publication. We are definitely going to be addressing this question during the entire training as well as during today's session. Uh, the next set is this, RNA-seq data analysis, processing, visualization, and biological interpretation, statistical analysis methods, and machine learning for bulk and single cell gene expression studies, identification of sample-specific overexpressed genes by utilizing unsupervised machine learning, like clustering, dimensionality reduction, et cetera and real-world applications of bioinformatics and RNA sequencing in biomedical research, biotechnology, and agriculture. So we are going to be taking up these questions and answering them not only in today's session, but also in all of the upcoming sessions. In fact, the upcoming omics logic transcriptomics program will focus on each of these topics in sessions like today. So we are going to be diving deep into, for example, we'll have sessions on machine learning. We'll have sessions on different types of sequencing techniques and they will all be dedicated sessions. And in the later part of this presentation today, Ilya and Dr. Mohit will take you through these sessions. So I'm not going to be talking more about them, but what I would like to introduce you to next is what are these omics logic programs? So if you're joining us for the first time, let me introduce you to what omics logic bioinformatics training is. 
Omics Logic is an international program that is running in five different regions with over 10,000 users around the world. Due to this fast growth, our team is working with local and regional coordinators that are helping refine local program logistics and leverage our online training resources, adapting them to the needs of students and researchers around the world. To achieve this, Omics Logic follow a project-based learning approach using research-grade tools to analyze data from top peer-reviewed journals. Omics Logic training has been completed by over 10,000 participants from 162 countries in over 300 workshops for six different specialization tracks like oncology, infectious diseases, precision medicine, neuroscience, data science for biomedical data, and comprehensive training on omics data analysis. And to answer everybody uh, is that uh, whoever is interested in research papers, Ilya is going to be discussing uh, more about research papers today. And these programs are conducted using a combination of online sessions like today, self-guided study materials, practical assignments, for an immersive experience that has proven to be effective in our well-known and respected omics logic programs. So in this one month period, you will have the opportunity to interact and collaborate with an international team of experts specialized in the areas of bioinformatics and data-driven research. Now, let me introduce you to the program mentors. We have Dr. Harpreet Kaur, who is our omics logic bioinformatics mentor and trainer. She will guide the sessions and her area of specialization is in cancer genomics. Dr. Mohit Mazumdar has a PhD in computational biology and over 10 years of experience working with industry and academia. Ilya Brodsky is our CEO and co-founder. His experience in research in academia has led to many research labs and university collaborations and has been recognized for the simplified approach to omics analysis for education. Now I would like to invite our CEO, Ilya, to talk more about RNA-seq data analysis in the context of infectious diseases. Over to you, Ilya. Thank you. Thank you very much, Beepsa, and welcome everyone to this webinar. So I'm excited to be here and share with you some of the topics in this program. So for those of you who are joining for the first time, my name is Ilya Brodsky. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Pine Biotech. And what our company does is we have a vision to enhance human health and well-being by enabling biological research and discovery with relevant data, solutions, and expert support. And so today what we'll talk about is one of the areas of our activity, which is training. But essentially, you'll see how this training is effectively supporting a number of research projects, which is a great example because this program is supported by both our team, but also is a result of a great collaboration with the University of Ghana, where uh, multiple participants are focused on developing their research projects. So uh, this uh, presentation that I will handle, the part that I will be doing, is going to be expanding on some of these topics that have already been mentioned by Bipsa, because I'll be sharing a few more details about the upcoming Omics Logic training program that will be focused on transcriptomic data analysis. And specifically, I'll try to answer the question, how can we leverage RNA-seq data to study infectious disease from the perspective of the host response, disease progression, and host pathogen interaction? And so what we'll do in this session is a brief uh, window into the full program that will be starting on April 16th. But we hope that we can answer all of your questions that are uh, going to lead into the practical hands-on sessions that will be conducted during the training program. So let's start by asking the question, why RNA-seq? Um, other methods of quantitative analysis of protein and mRNA expression, including real-time PCR, uh, Western blotting, microarray hybridization assays, and other techniques are widely used in research and clinical applications. But unlike most of these historical platforms for clinical RNA measurement, um, these methods 
uh, are um, uh, not as uh, rich in what type of information uh, they can offer about uh, RNA-seq data. So RNA-seq is a fundamentally an open platform technology that allows both quantification of known and predefined RNA species, as well as the capability to detect and quantify rare and novel RNA transcript variants within a sample. And so RNA sequencing essentially has revolutionized the way biologists examine transcriptomes and has been successfully applied in biological research related to drug discovery, as well as clinical development and the basic biological research studies. And so compared to microarray-based transcriptome profiling, RNA-seq has a much wider dynamic range and avoids some of the technical limitations, such as varying probe performance and cross-hybridization. So RNA-seq can really measure the expression levels of thousands of genes simultaneously and provide insights into functional pathways and the regulatory networks in biological systems. So RNA-seq really is a, a platform for in-depth quantification and analysis of the full transcriptome. Uh, and so uh, in, in application to infectious diseases, RNA sequencing allows for the detection of a wide vari variety of RNA species, including mRNA, non-coding RNAs, pathogen RNA, chimeric gene fusion, transcript isoforms and splice variants, and provides the capability to quantify known predefined RNA species and rare RNA transcript variants within a sample. In addition to differential expression and detection of novel transcripts, RNA-seq also supports the detection of mutation and germline variation for hundreds to thousands of expressed genetic variants, facilitating assessment of allele-specific expression of these variants. So in application to disease, uh, to infectious diseases, uh, we can think of multiple types of uh, applications. For example, pathogen uh, diagnostic. Uh, because many clinically important RNA viruses like HIV, Ebola, West Nile, dengue, hepatitis, uh, Coxsackie and influenza viruses, and uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome like SARS, uh, MERS, and SARS-CoV-2, uh, qualitative reverse transcription PCR assays have been developed and are commonly used in the clinic for viral detection and, and, and genotyping. And so many of these targets will be translated into RNA-based sequencing assays in the near future. So what is needed is a deep research into the ways that their RNA is modified during infection, different disease stages, and various subpopulations to be able to improve the diagnostic assays that are clinically useful. Um, pathogen mRNA could be measured. For example, microbial mRNA could be a useful marker of infection as expression may improve detection in cases of low level and persistent infection, uh, and also could be a better predictor of disease compared to direct genomic detection. For example, the simple detection of human papillomavirus, HPV, DNA is not sufficient to diagnose HPV-related squamous cell carcinoma, um, and so RNA-based diagnostic to detect HPV have been developed. Um, you can also measure host responses in the form of mRNA signatures that is also going to be useful to monitor specific types of infections because we can detect host response gene expression. So for example, upregulation of specific host immune factors like interferon be uh, beta-1, interferon lambda-2, and interferon lambda-3 has recently demonstrated for genotype 3 HCV infection, hepatitis C, which is associated with accelerated liver fibrosis and is an independent risk factor for hepatocellular carcinoma. Uh, host microRNA gene expression during the infection response is also proving to be a fruitful source of potential diagnostic biomarkers for specific infections, as well as for example, latent infection and active disease with infection similar to uh, mycobacterium tuberculosis. So many different ways we can use uh, RNA sequencing. But as you can see, before it is translated into the clinic, so before we touch on the aspect of translational research, it really has to do with the analysis of raw, large RNA sequencing data. And so one of the major challenges that I want to talk about is uh, to uh, create an accurate, reproducible, and effective 
ways of processing large scale data sets that represent maybe gigabytes or even terabytes of data. And so such large quantities really prevent many researchers, clinicians, and students to gain a practical hands-on feel for what is RNA-seq data analysis from the beginning to the end. So what I want to do now is show you how this program will help you prepare to understand some of the flexibilities and some of the many different options that we have in the RNA-seq methods of processing, analysis, and biological interpretation uh, for these large scale studies. So uh, Bipsi, if you could share please the details of uh, the demo of uh, server uh, TBIN for platform. Um, please uh, go with me to server.tbio.info. This is a uh, large uh, big data processing cloud-based uh, tool that we have developed and we have been using successfully over the past uh, several, uh, I would say years now, uh, to train as well as perform research uh, using a variety of different tools for processing, uh, analysis, comparative analysis, uh, hypothesis generating analysis, as well as downstream biological interpretation. Uh, so, uh, okay, let me see if uh, the details have been posted. So, okay, thank you. So um, as you can see here in the chat box, uh, we have demo access. Uh, you'll be able to kind of sample and see what this platform really looks like. Uh, to understand a little bit more, once you are logged in and you can see right here, uh, once you are logged in, you'll be able to um, try some of the demo pipelines that will give you a sense of what are some of the options and alternatives to RNA-seq data analysis. And to see uh, what that looks like, I'm going to use this section right here, RNA-seq chip. Uh, so uh, this is really intended for processing. And I'm going to click on this down arrow to be able to see what that looks like. So you can see that there's a number of demo projects. And I'm just going to use one of these to give you a sense of what the processing pipeline development looks like and how we can apply it to a variety of different topics that we'll discuss here in just a few moments. Uh, so as we start the process of analysis of RNA-seq data, it's important to keep the logic of that analysis in mind. And basically all the processing consists, consists of three major steps. The first one is pre-processing, so we have to clean the raw data from all kinds of adapters and technical variation that we want to exclude. Then mapping or alignment, that could be either to the full transcriptome or the genome, it could actually be a combined strategy. And then quantification, and this could refer to the quantification of known, novel, or alternative variations that are referred to as isoforms, um, typically in this type of an analysis. So if you scroll down, you'll be able to see a very simple pipeline that we can design and quickly execute on this cloud server. So I'm just going to click on OK. And here I'm going to be able to select some pre-processing steps that you can see trim the raw reads from the fast few files. And you can read a little bit more about this method if you scroll down. You can then see right here a next uh, step is going to be highlighted automatically, so you don't have to think and uh, really plan your analysis, but follow this step-by-step -step process to learn about the inputs and outputs first. And here you'll learn about amplification of PCR, uh, that's called bridge amplification. And then we will ma map our uh, data using HiSat2, which is essentially a, an updated uh, processing of top hat 2 so here you can see some of the important variations in mapping that have to be considered. For example, we need to consider the different exons and introns as well as alternative splicing and how that is going to be detected in the multiple reads, typically millions of reads that we have per sample. So here we're going to click on OK. We can detect novel isoforms by measuring the splicing junctions between pieces of reads. And then we can actually uh, create a novel transcriptome annotation file called the genome transfer file where, where all of this information is going to be stored for once we do 
mapping on transcript. So again, we mapped the raw reads, we've cleaned them up, we now created those junctions and saved all of that information in our reference file. And after we have done that, we can now quantify this information by preparing a table of expression. And the table of expression is essentially a table that is already structured. So instead of individual reads, we have samples and genes or isoforms, and we can quantify them by creating a continuous data set. And that continuous data could now be used for either differential gene expression, which is downstream analysis of genes that are up or down regulated based on groups of samples, or what I will show you next it are some other tools that you can use to perform uh, unsupervised and supervised analysis using a variety of machine learning tools that would be helpful to detect variable pattern, patterns across large data sets, such as uh, hundreds and even thousands of samples. Okay, so here we have a sample pipeline. You can click on download pipeline output files and just kind of see what some of those output files are going to look like. Uh, and once you get that table of expression, which is the major output from this analysis, you'll be able to see a variety of data integration, data mining, and specific virology applications for these data sets. So here you can see supervised analysis, unsupervised analysis, utilities that allow us to do biological interpretation, uh, and also you can see a variety of specifically virology specific applications. But before we jump into these, let me briefly talk about how this applies to infections caused by different types of pathogens, such as viruses, bacteria, and parasites. So when it comes to viruses, we think of them in an oversimplified model because we think of them as single units that comprise a specific type of a process modeled after what we know about the infection. But in reality, viruses are very complex machinery consisting of many variations of the same types of proteins and protein elements. And so when we think about the process of infection, one objective for RNA-seq data is to be able to clarify and accurately detect the different types of interactions happening between these different variants of those proteins and the host response. And essentially what the objective of this analysis in the context of viral infection is to develop a data-driven model that allows us to identify specific elements that we can now play around with to determine the interaction, the host response, and the variability of disease manifestation across many different patients, right? Because we can think of disease having multiple types of outcomes overall. And so in that process, it's important to be able to identify these specific elements that have a major impact on disease progression. And so you can see in this example of a study, we can take this gene expression table that we have prepared in the RNA-seq data processing pipeline. And then we can start differentiate between different stages of disease progression, eliminating using knockdown technology or eliminating specific genes from the viral infection and measuring the differentiation between immune responses. And so once we understand those differences to be present in the data, we can start our comparative analysis. And so when we think about the comparative analysis, in many cases, this comparative analysis is added to the end of the pipeline that we just prepared. You can see that it allows us to ask the question, what are the specific genes that are affected by the difference in condition measured perhaps in uh, multiple samples across a couple of groups. And so when we think about that, we are really focusing on extracting the specific genes that have a measurable and statistically uh, uh, reliable differentiation or differentially expressed genes. Now, in many cases, 
when we think of this simple design for the experiment, it doesn't really capture a variety of factors and how they influence the specific type of conditions that we might observe. And so a lot of times we can use more advanced methods like factor regression analysis to be able to identify how the infection process can be impacted by age, different treatment, different comorbidities, and other factors included in the experiment design. And this is especially critical when we deal with a real patient population, because this real patient population is going to be affected by multiple factors that we need to consider in our model. Ultimately, once we have the p-values and the specific fold change values from this uh, comparative analysis, we can now start asking a biological question of how can we map the differential gene expression or variable gene expression across different biological pathways. And so an important step here is to correlate the IDs of individual genes with specific annotation into gene ontology terms and pathway that we can find on such repositories as KEG or David. And so we'll also talk about how we can leverage these applications to be able to uh, analyze what is the biological uh, kind of uh, summary of the identified genes. And so what we'll do in this program that we've been talking about is really try to focus on each one of these steps. I know that I'm going really fast right now for the purpose of time. Uh, and we're going to look at a variety of factors that you'll be able to learn and practice in a hands-on fashion. And so this will include uh, relevant tools like we saw, including tools for big data analysis and tools for uh, downstream analysis using R and Python. We'll talk about different types of applications to bulk and single cell RNA-seq data. And we'll also talk about a variety of ways that we can uh, use the methods that we have discussed so far to apply them to individual projects or use cases for RNA-seq in infectious diseases. And so because this project is a collaboration with the Noguchi uh, a Memorial Institute for Medical Research at the University of Ghana, as well as our collaborators at the Tauber Bioinformatics Research Center, which is at University of Haifa in Israel, I want to present you with some case studies that we are working on to make them ready for this session that's going to be starting on April 16, so that you can have a perspective of what types of project examples we're going to be using and how you can apply this to the specifics of your maybe ideas about RNA-seq and infectious diseases. So this is an article uh, that was published in 2015, but with the emergence of SARS-CoV-2 has become significantly relevant to, I think, what we are trying to understand about the SARS-CoV-2 COVID-19 infection. Uh, where we see how a specific gene, P53, downregulates SARS coronavirus replication and is targeted by the SARS unique domain and PL Pro via E3 ubiquitin ligase RCHY1. And so this publication shows us how we can analyze RNA seq data to understand the interaction between the specific proteins that are produced by the pathogen, by the virus in this case, and the regular pathways that are designed in the host system to reduce replication of the pathogen. It's important also that this same analytical technique can help us differentiate between responses to a variety of different respiratory infections. And here you can see an example from a GEO dataset accession number GSE 149273, which provides us with a data set that compares multiple types of respiratory infections and how we can measure the responses to those infections, understanding the variability between different agents that cause the infection itself. Another uh, example I think that is very clear is how we can use uh, the RNA-seq data from both bulk and single cell RNA-seq data to understand the imbalanced host response to SARS-CoV-2, which drives the development of more severe COVID-19 infection. So as you can see on this image, you can see that there is essentially a typical 
response to coronavirus uh, or, or to respiratory infections. And then there is this specific acute SARS specific response. And so we can measure the inflammation and the different markers of inflammation to really understand where the difference is, including what types of cells can that difference be measured in, in a more specific way. We'll also see how a very similar process to what we observe in SARS-CoV-2 is actually common between a variety of other types of pathogens. For example, here you can see Ebola and Marburg viruses actually use a similar response evasion, immune response evasion technique by targeting specific pathways on the host immune side to uh, enable effective replication and uh, especially infection of other tissues that are typically more protected by these tissue-specific interferon responses. Another focus for this program is going to be on malaria. And so what we'll talk about are several examples where we can look at cell-specific immune responses to the different stages of replication for the pathogen. So malaria is a parasite and goes through these uh, important cycles of development uh, that are causing different types of infection and have to be targeted and detected accurately, which can be done using RNA-seq data. And another important aspect of all of these studies is that in many cases, when we talk about these translational research studies, they are conducted at cell line, animal model, as well as patient level responses. And so we need to understand that our data represents accurately what happens in a system, and that system is applicable to the patient response. So ultimately, what we'll do in this program is we will take a look at these examples, and we'll see how RNA-seq data is a great example of multi-omic studies that allow us to use bioinformatics for clinical, diagnostic, and therapeutic response studies that enable a better understanding of infectious disease, and prepare us for the next phase of designing, repurposing, and uh, appropriately targeting uh, specific uh, pathogen-driven um, diseases. And so we'll, at the end, talk about how such data could be integrated by using uh, high-throughput uh, screening, uh, measurement of immune responses and host responses to different treatments and different uh, ways uh, that the pathogen infects the host to essentially uh, enable a faster and more accurate application of novel therapeutics and repurposed drugs to treat these infectious diseases that are currently uh, representing a huge burden on whole uh, sections of the population. So hopefully this provides a clear um, perspective on how RNA-seq data could be used in application to study and translate research insights into practical use. And now I briefly wanna to touch on some specific sessions that we've designed as a part of this program to introduce you to RNA-seq or to transcriptomic data analysis. So first of all, to give you an overview, I want to introduce you to an important resource where we will be hosting a lot of the asynchronous materials that you can leverage already, even before the program starts, to get a sense of what are some of these methods of analysis and what are some of the applications in uh, processing, analysis, uh, visualization, as well as interpretation of RNA-seq data for bulk RNA-seq and single cell RNA-seq. So here I have a link to the older portal that we are uh, slowly moving away from, but it's still live and available. And thank you, Bipsa, for posting this new link, which is learn.omicslogic.com. So let me show you briefly uh, this portal so that all of you can take a look at what's there. So this is the Omics Logic Learn portal. And this portal is going to allow anyone to register for free. So you can create your account for free. There's no payment involved uh, using different social media uh, tools. And uh, you can also create your own pa uh, uh, password. And after you log in, you essentially gain access to uh, a variety of coursework which include practical assignments on our platform, as well as using R and Python. 
so here you can see some of those examples uh, of uh, coding and different types of uh, example projects that we will be going through in this program. And I think BIPSA will take some time at the end of this session to discuss the process of registration and what types of resources are going to be included. So as you go through these asynchronous courses, it's important that a lot of them include some practical review tutorials and examples similar to what we did today, but you will also find different variations of those pipelines that you could compare and contrast to really understand the significance of the specific methods of uh, analysis, as well as the specific logic behind this analysis. And that's why we call this omics logic. So it really expands on the logic of when we are applying different methods, why we are applying different methods, and how to do this in such a way that we can get reproducible results for our analysis. And again, the purpose is to provide you with a full overview from basic processing to biological interpretation. So we will start on April 16th, and we will talk about processing transcriptomic data that will include a detailed resource that you can take home with you and continue practicing even after the program is over. We will highlight important terminology for you to know, and we will compare different methods of RNA quantification. We will then perform different types of pipelines to understand the logic and prepare the table of expression. After we get that table of expression, we'll talk about different ways of visualizing our data to understand what are the important considerations for transcript and isoform expression. We'll talk about detection of viral pathogens in RNA-seq data from the host, and we'll talk about the different immune responses as examples that you can study and compare between different pipelines. We'll then talk about differential gene expression, including practical assignments in R using methods like DSeq2 and EdgeR. So you will see how we talk about the concept behind it. What is the statistical principle? How do we apply it specifically to data sets like gene expression, which contain thousands and thousands of genes? And we'll talk about important methods of data preparation for downstream analysis that include normalization and log scale transformation. We'll also practice how to do this using our coding exercises that you can do right from within the browser. So you are not spending uh, the significant time it typically takes to install all the necessary software and can actually test whether the analysis that you are performing is reproducible and accurate according to predefined test results. We'll also talk about more advanced analysis, including ANOVA, regression, false discovery rate, and what are some of the terms that you need to know to be able to apply the statistical tests in a more reproducible and accurate way. And we'll talk about biological interpretation, including annotation of pathways like KEG, uh, GEO, or gene expression omnibus data sets, and annotation using gene ontology terms and David. We'll also talk about how the interpretation of this biology can help us understand the specific properties of protein-protein interaction and the important variation that could be detected using uh, gene expression data. And so to do that, we'll use methods like gene set enrichment analysis and the specific types of settings that you have to have so that you can apply this effectively to interpret complex regulatory pathways of immune response and regulation of specific processes that are hijacked by pathogens as they cause disease. Importantly, with so much data and so much variation, we do face a growing challenge of big data. And so we'll talk about unsupervised methods of data mining or unsupervised methods of machine learning that include clustering, and there are many different methods of clustering, including clustering that is specifically designed for big data sets, as well as methods for dimensionality reduction that include principal component analysis, TSNI, and others. And so what you will find on our practical uh, platform, the learn uh, omicslogic.com are a variety of tutorials to practice the packages for visualization and analysis, including tbioinfo-based methods that you can first learn the logic behind 
and then see the scripting components that can help you make this analysis uh, modified to maybe present specific types of visualizations in your project. We'll also talk about different methods of supervised machine learning or classification and feature selection. And so there's a variety of different classification models that you can use. And so we will talk about how you can apply data mining together with classification to achieve optimal results in terms of your accuracy, as well as to understand, so make it interpretable, how can we understand the specific methods and when to apply what type of methods or maybe what are some of the considerations between your training and test as well as validation data sets. Importantly, as you probably all know, there is a huge excitement about the opportunities that single cell RNA-seq data can offer, especially in the context of immune responses where a variety of different cells are responsible for different stages of mounting an immune response to a particular infection, as well as to understand the differences of disease progression across many stages of disease manifestations or clinical manifestations of disease. And so we'll talk about the growing numbers of methodologies for preparation of single cell libraries that include 10x genomics and other types of uh, uh, all kinds of uh, preparation techniques for uh, sCNA-seq or uh, single cell uh, transcriptomics. We'll talk about the logic behind building a pipeline for single cell analysis. And we'll also discuss how you can build a pipeline to essentially analyze, integrate, and visualize single cell RNA-seq data without trying to open those tables in Excel, which I know we all like, but it becomes more and more difficult as you have thousands and thousands of samples across thousands and thousands of genes. So we'll talk about how to prepare a pipeline without necessarily having to deal with these tables hands uh, on on your computer, so using cloud-based tools. So again, let me briefly um, answer some of the questions. Uh, so I, I'm done with my part of the presentation. Before we move on to uh, Dr. Mohit Mazumdar, who will talk about independent project design uh, using this uh, program, I want to make sure that I answer any technical questions that you might have about my part of the presentation. So uh, Bipsa, if you could let me know if there are any specific questions that I need to answer about my part of the presentation before we move on. Currently, Ilya, I do not see any questions related uh, to your part of the presentation, but we definitely had those uh, requests about uh, learning to use RNA-seq in other areas. For example, RNA, there was a question from Priyan who had asked earlier, is change in RNA sequencing in some microbes like SARS-CoV-2 uh, give a great impact in their nature and behavior? Okay, so I, I think uh, related to SARS-CoV-2, we actually will have a whole series of examples, as I mentioned before, where a lot is really not known. So I think that we are basing a lot of our understanding of the immune responses on kind of a very typical uh, model-based understanding of the interaction between the pathogen and the host. Now, obviously, as you get deeper into the data, you start realizing how variable the disease is how it varies between different cell types, tissues, different patients, and different other factors that we are not considering when we study the infection in cell line uh, models of infection. So there's a lot to learn about in terms of what RNA-seq can teach us about the process of infection. And I think there's a lot of novel insights that you can extract from data sets that are available online in public repositories. And so I think that to answer that comprehensively, uh, we need to talk about more specific examples. Uh, these examples relate to how the infection happens in different cells. It talks about how the infection happens in patients. You have animal models that represent some features of human disease, but not all of them. And so I think that it's important to um, kind of find the rich uh, repositories of SARS-CoV-2 RNA-seq data sets and start asking those specific questions. Um, and and uh, so I will pass it on to Dr. Mohit Mazumdar, who will speak about some of these examples and how we go about 
preparing uh, project examples. Uh, but uh, briefly, I see a question here from uh, Asia, um, who's asking, will you be going from basic RNA extraction to sequencing in detail? Um, and you don't have any uh, prior knowledge, but your project includes transcriptomic analysis of COVID-19. Exactly, yeah. So we're gonna be going from the very basics of what is the method of data preparation, how do you prepare it, and what will some of those example data sets in public repositories, what do they really represent, to the basic steps that anyone, including a complete novice, can reproduce on their own. So I think this is very appropriate for those of you that are interested in applying RNA-seq data to SARS-CoV-2 or other pathogens, but you can join this program and essentially have access to the synchronous resources that will include all of the session recordings that you can watch in your own time. They will include practical assignments that you can complete on your own schedule. You're not required to complete them uh, spe for specific dates, but you will benefit from live interactive sessions where you can ask questions if you don't understand something, or you can practice together with a mentor. Now, Bipsa will speak about this later, but we do also offer a private mentor support. So you can get access to a mentor who can troubleshoot any data set for you or help you get unstuck with many of the technical challenges that you might likely face as you deal with real research data. Um, so maybe to uh, make sure that we get to all parts of this presentation, I want to introduce you to other uh, trainers in this program who are Harpreet uh, Kaur, uh, Dr. Harpreet Kaur. Uh, she has a PhD in bioinformatics. Uh, her expertise is in cancer genomics, but she has been preparing several of the example projects that we will be going through. And so you will hear from her a lot about the technical part of RNA-seq processing, analysis, visualization, and interpretation. And then Dr. Mohit Mazumdar is our Omics Logic project mentor who uh, helps develop uh, projects uh, that are independent. So uh, many of you who are working on independent projects will be able to uh, leverage his many years of expertise and uh, background in many publications that he co-authored or was the lead author on uh, to really understand how bioinformatics can lead to a successful research and industry career. Uh, so Dr. Mazumdar, I will pass it on to you to take it on from here. Thank you. Thank you, Ilya and Deepsha, for the overview of this Omics Logic training program. Uh, for anyone joining for the first time, my name is Mohit Mazumdar, and let me share the screen. So, and thanks for joining the session and staying till now. So, yeah, there you go. Right, so uh, as I was telling you that I'm one of the global rep representative of Pine Biotech and one of the co-mentors of this uh, of this Omics Logic program. And I'll be available throughout this program to help guide students, propose and work on bioinformatics NGS projects. But today I wanted to talk about the structure of the Omics Logic, uh, this Omics Logic Transcriptomics program. So in this program, along with the live sessions, the participants will be, uh, will be able to learn through the interactive and engaging content on the transcriptomics data analysis. So this transcriptomics data analysis program is a special program by uh, our Omics Logic team. And this program has been taken by thousands of users and has evolved as one of the most reviewed uh, uh, program uh, in our structures. So uh, to tell you more about the resources and the Omics Logic program, and as well as like how this Omics Logic program will be translating into a research project. So that would be the next part of this uh, small presentation that I have prepared for all of you. So Omics Logic is an integrated uh, educational and research platform. So this research platform is a place where student and faculty can learn, conduct uh, research and collaborate. 
so this platform uh, combines introductory coursework on biological data analysis and data management and, ana and analysis tool that you can take uh, any time like at your own uh, at your own pace uh, because those will be available for all the participants throughout this period of the uh, program so this learning and uh, this learning material uh, consists of variety of topics like Ilya discussed such as viral uh, viral transcriptomics analysis and then how it applies to molecular medicine. So we will be doing practical exercises where we'll be introducing basic statistical concepts uh, and advanced analytical methods, like uh, how do you integrate data? How do you do machine learning? How do you do network analysis? And then we will be also doing hands-on assignments uh, that are based on this visual interface that links together like individual algorithms into bioinformatics pipelines. So let's uh, talk a little bit about the bioinformatics pipeline. So one of the advantage of, of learning through this is that uh, you are learning from workflows that allows participants to learn about complex bioinformatics pipelines and algorithms and their outputs, right? So this transcriptomics program exposes the participants to a wider range of transcriptomics data analysis, including the analysis of highly anticipated single cell gen gene expression data, as Ilya mentioned. So this pro uh, the focus of this program is to train participants to learn and apply transcriptomics data analysis using example data sets and projects that we have prepared. And then uh, like once you have uh, gone through that entire process and to be able to communicate this, uh, communicate this outcome of the research. So we start from the training basic, starting from the very basic, and then we transform into this learning process of how we do trans, uh, different types of transcriptomics data analysis by learning through like several of the published projects and also different data sets that are coming up. And after that, uh, after that process, the next step is to get feedback. So this is uh, this program uses a strong feedback mechanism where we get feedback from the experts as well as international um, uh, team, uh, which uh, actually has expertise in different fields of uh, research. So to get that feedback, we kind of, once we get that feedback, we kind of improve the project. So how do we improve? Maybe those feedbacks that we get, they include information from the literature that we, we should look into this sort of article that would help our analysis. And also to you know, strategically design those workflows and analysis steps. So that's the second, st uh, that's the stage after you kind of start developing a proposal. So many of our parties, part, past participants have gone through this entire process of starting from courses and then next to, and then next to work on uh, example data sets and then uh, exploring the public data sets to be able to come up with, you know, these sort of posters, conference posters, and then work on a publication. So I will be today, uh, you know, talk. Uh, will be I will be today talking about the process of a proposal to publication or to complete a research uh, study, right? So, so as I was telling you, this entire process of learning uh, has been really effective for students who are interested in learning about NGS data uh, analysis and then who wants also for those who wants to apply it for a noble bioinformatics research project. So we have had students who came from uh, without any background in bioinformatics, who were undergraduate students. Then we have faculty who came with, uh, who are working on mo molecular biology, but want to develop expertise in bioinformatics. Then we also have had uh, people from different companies who are working uh, in a research setup or who are interested to do this sort of research. Uh, that would help them contribute uh, to what is ongoing with all these different types of diseases and the problems that we are facing in our healthcare system. So uh, this program will help those who are interested to apply uh, these uh, learning into a Nobel Bioinformatics project, as well as for faculty, I mean, to use these research, resources and conduct independent uh, workshops for university students and also to do their own independent you know research so the materials we have been uh, the that we have collected they have been reviewed by faculty and the students from top uh, us and international universities so this kind of feedback uh, actually demonstrate that the learning could be very effective if done properly and also like even transformational so that's what i was coming at to so the process of 
next like i we went through the process of basic learning then from basic to advanced statistical uh, learning and then applying it to some example projects and then moving into a research proposal so once you have a research proposal and that has been uh, have had the feedback the next step uh, would be to you know uh, to be able to work on that so after successfully completing this omics logic transcriptomics program program the participants will be eligible to join the research fellowship program so the research fellowship program is is you know designed sorry sorry about that so the research fellowship program is actually designed to help students uh, learn and apply this bioinformatics projects uh, by applying their learning into a bioinformatics projects where we work with them uh, we we work the mentor work with them and we work with them throughout the entire process helping them how to apply bioinformatics research into a real life situation or real life uh, problem so to learn about this entire process of registration you have to start with the omics logic this omics logic transcriptomics program if you are interested in ngs data analysis so to learn about this registration process i would like to now invite uh, ms bipsha so over to you ms uh, bipsha and thank, thank you so for much, uh, there are any questions about this section about the projects please feel free to reach out to me and also bipsha if you can uh, maybe uh, say if there are any questions rela related please let me know yeah dr uh, masumda there's one question um, Imo Doe uh, is asking: Will you be discussing gene expression in chronic non-communicable diseases uh, such as cancer in this training? This is uh, my area of interest. Yeah. So the examples that we have uh, on our platform that includes, like, if you take the transcriptomics one course, the example data says that that we are using there is the mouse PDX model. So it's a breast cancer um, mouse uh, mouse data. so we also have like a cell line data that you can like learn from so we have a lot of cancer examples that you can leverage so when you join this program if you are interested in a very specialized uh, cancer training then we will be able to help you out with the available public data sets as well as there are example there are a lot of example data sets that we have collected for cancer research and that uses the transcriptomics data analysis and you will be able to learn from those as well okay so thank you uh, so much dr mazumdar so i'll continue by sharing my screen here and walk everybody through the registration resources and the different aspects of the program and i know that there are a lot of questions that i would like to address in this part so please continue to post your questions in the chat box so for different parts of this program we'll utilize different resources that you all have had the chance to have a look at like the learn omics logic platform the tiba info platform so to start with please continue to register for free on learn.omics logic and i will take a moment in a minute to do that with you together and throughout the course you will also be given directions to access the T Bio Info platform for processing and analysis of RNA seq data, like Ilya showed you today. The platform includes demo pipelines, again, which was demonstrated today, as well as data management and analysis cloud infrastructure to run bioinformatics pipelines. So, different stages of analysis are performed in different sections of this multi-omics platform, and. for each participant who are joining in today's session or who will be joining in the program uh, sorry not in today's session will be joining the full program they will have an educational access to the platform which means that they would be able to use public domain data sets upload them to the platform and then work on the output to understand or answer any kind of biological questions that they are trying to solve which dr mohit touched upon briefly in the research fellowship or the project aspect of the program and we will also have exercises designed to explain coding in r and python so from the very basics to the cutting edge like loading transformation visualization as well as complex discovery of patterns in real data sets used by researchers to study and understand biological phenomena at the molecular level 
we will learn about important concepts within infectious diseases such as the central dogma the immunology of infection and disease progression central dogma of molecular biology immunology of infection molecular disease markers and stages host pathogen interaction response heterogeneity gene regulation target pathways as well as use bioinformatics analysis methods and resources like how to process ngs data variant calling rna seq pipeline statistical analysis machine learning then how to annotate and also we'll use example projects data sets and methods of data management to understand the efficacy of infection drug treatment sars ebola and malaria example we'll use public domain repositories like ncbi virus geo malaria gen will understand what are the different clinical risk factors and outcomes and how to find and organize this data for your own study and how to structure a bioinformatics project so this are going to be the program objectives so once you complete the program these are some of the learning outcomes you will know how to do the following read and understand bioinformatics literature perform basic ngs analysis processing steps analyze data and form hypothesis prepare data for machine learning cross check signals with gene databases know what type of data is required to answer scientific questions create your own bioinformatics analysis presentation of your results in an organized way so we will be focusing on all of these and all of these skill sets are essential in bioinformatics and can be also translated to some other fields as well so i have a question for you what skill set or area would you want to learn within the field of research like say infectious diseases or rna seq for agriculture any other thing please put in one word or sentence in the chat box and shortly i would be replying to some of the questions in the chat box okay so asia says that tb tuberculosis and sars cov2 anybody else is interested in any other diseases so you can continue to put those down in the chat box so amin ali says cancer sadaf khan says oncogenics uh, castro says sepsis cancer arizu says alzheimers interesting arizu i will point out uh, point you out your resource on alzheimers that we have as well as we have several resources on cancer uh, which dr mohit spoke about earlier okay thank you all for sharing so if anybody else wants to add to this then please continue to uh, post them down in the chat box so adi doing says biomarkers of uh, okay i'm not reading the scientific name bladder cancer then sherif hamed is on malaria and dengue so malaria is going to be one of the topics that we will be covering most as we are doing this as a part of a collaborative program with noguchi Okay, so we have some tuberculosis, SARS-CoV-2, then canine parboviral enteritis uh, that came to me privately in the chat. Uh, Lilian is interested in SARS-CoV-2. I think these are some very interesting areas, and I think we would be covering. And in fact, we have worked on several of these areas with other participants as well. So I will take you quickly through. some of these resources and show you like you know how you can effectively utilize this so uh, someone had asked me that will we would be getting a certificate or not at the end of the program yes so you would be receiving a certificate when you complete this program so now let me show you how to register for the program and also uh, show you some of the resources right so Shashikan, let me show you the free fee structure as well as all the questions. Okay, so Sadaf, all the programs are not free. The program itself is not free. There is a fee to join the program. So let me take you 
to understanding how everything is working. So if you have already registered for this program, you would have received an email that has all the details on how to join the program. So that email states this link, which is called transcriptomics.omicslogic.com. So if you come with me to this uh, link, I'm posting it on the chat box, you'll be able to see that this is the page. And here you see that it's starting on 16th of April and ending on 20th of May. It is a one month program. We'll have sessions which spread out over a week. So we do not have sessions every day. Each of these sessions are only one hour sessions like we are having today. And here are some of the different session dates. So we'll have a session on April 16th. The next session will be on April 19th, April 23rd, so on and so forth. You can check out this entire uh, dates here and continue to read about them. I will show you what are the different registration costs and also explain to you how to register for here. We also have an ongoing 40% discount going on and I'll show you in your email how you can find that as well. So you will notice once you click on get started, there are different costs for this program. So it's the same program. I'll make sure uh, to help you understand what are these different costs about. So the basic program, the basic cost covers all of those things that we have discussed today. So you will be able to attend the full program. You will be able to access all of the resources mentioned during this entire one month of training. So what are these additional two intermediate and advanced licenses for? So this intermediate license comes with an additional mentor support. So if you're interested in working closely with a mentor or you feel that you need extra sessions to help you uh, with this, so we will be able to guide you in the intermediate course because it includes mentor support while the advanced uh, license gives you access to 30 more days. So you'd see here that uh, the program ends on 20th May, but if you are taking the advanced license, the program will end on the 20th of June for you because you will get 30 days more to continue with your project. So at this part of the session, it includes if you are going to, if you think that you're going to be working on a project related to say infectious diseases, or any of the related topics that we will cover and you, you want to do that project, then we recommend that you take up this license because that will give you enough chance to first cover the training, which both of these licenses will cover. And then also go for a project on your own, which will be your own novel project. And it will be supported by our mentors as well as some of the research fellows who work with us. So these are the differences and just to let everybody know, we have a 40% discount running right at the moment. So if you notice your email, there is this discount code that you can enter right around here. So if you put early bird discount and apply it, you would be able to see the difference in pricing and uh, check out with it. This discount would not be valid beyond next Monday. So the discount uh, will continue to grow smaller like the next discount would be 30%. So please make sure of the maximum discount that is available right now. So this is the early bird discount that is only available. And also let me answer some of these questions before I move on. So can you tell me job chances after this course completion? So Shashikan, to answer that question, I would have to tell you that uh, applying for a job uh, is definitely dependent on what kind of job you're applying for what uh, is the exact criteria that your employer has. So, but what we have seen, and I will introduce you and ask you to follow us on LinkedIn is that there are a lot of participants who have completed many programs like this, not just transcriptomics, we have several different programs and we continue to share about their progress here. And in addition to that, I will introduce you to some of the research projects. So let me find the research projects, it is right here. So these are some of the novel research projects. And these projects have been proposed by participants, by students. Uh, some of them 
who are also high school students. For example, you can see this project is by Amelia Truong. She's a high school student. So these students continue to do the projects and they continue to work with us in mentor support. So I do not know uh, whether you are going to get a job or not. What we do here is prepare you for a different sets of skills that you acquire. You learn about RNA seq and what we are trying to do here is teach you the logic of analysis. So once you learn the logic, you can apply that learning to any different kinds of projects, different types of data and work there. So that is the skill set we hope that you are able to develop over time. So thank you. And Karim's question, is there any difference between the research fellowship and the advanced option? Uh, definitely, there is a difference between the research fellowship and the advanced option. So the research fellowship is a three month program completely where we are only working on projects. So most of these projects which are here that you see here, these are all our research fellows who have completed these projects in a three months or a six month time period. It's a very dedicated program where uh, you are required, but they are required to definitely do their tasks complete those. It's a week to week and very intensive kind of a training. And we are involved in those research projects in the capacity as mentors and help to guide these research projects. And in fact, the research fellows are also supposed to present these projects on different sessions that we have from time to time. So that is also one of the necessary uh, aspects of uh, when it comes to the research project. Okay, I'll post the discount code one more time in the chat box. It's called early bird 40. So let me just post the discount code in the chat box for everybody again, in case someone did not receive it and you can enter it right here. So let me select any of these options, enter it right here and apply it and see. So you see that the price is $90 available only till Monday next week. So please make sure to take advantage of the opportunity that is there. And let me also answer some of these other questions that are there. So Karim, uh, let me know if I have been able to completely answer your questions. If you have any other question, I would like to request everybody to reach out to me. Uh, marketing at pine.bio is the email ID. Uh, Lena, you can opt for the... Uh, fellowship program at any point of time. We really keep it open. You can, uh, it is up to you which of these uh, method, which of these licenses, sorry, not the methods, but which of these licenses you are choosing from which program, this is completely up to you. So depending on what you require at the moment, you can uh, do this. And answering Nath's question, do we need advanced laptop PC or the general one is enough? So this is the most interesting part, Nath. So uh, as Ilya showed you the TBI info platform, so let me take you back to server.tbio. So this is a cloud-based platform, which means that you do not need to install any kind of software or hardware in your own local system. If you have an internet connection, and of course everybody has a browser, it can be Chrome or it can be any other browsers, you can utilize it in the browser. We definitely recommend Google Chrome for the best performance. And you will be able to analyze very large data sets. If each participant will have five terabytes of space in the cloud to work on different kinds of public domain data sets. And you will be able to go through these different areas. So Ilya has only demonstrated the demo pipelines, but in the sessions, we'll also work with some of these other pipelines that are here and also the pipelines here. And uh, we will be doing that in depth with you. We'll have uh, sessions and we'll work together with you. In fact, in case you have any questions or you are stuck somewhere. So we'll work through with you through those problems during the sessions that we have. So Karim, yeah, you can definitely join the fellowship program without a predefined project at hand. Uh, okay. Okay, uh, I'm going to be uh, addressing some of the questions. Okay, so Karim, yes, you can join without. So many times it happens that some of the research fellows are joining in for the first time. They have no idea what they would want to work on. 
but maybe just an area. So someone would say that, you know, I'm interested in cancer. So then we help them define, you know, what type of cancer, because just saying cancer is a, it's a very large question and it has so many things like you can do, it can be breast cancer, liver cancer, someone mentioned bladder cancer. So there is so many opportunities that are there. So you can define that during the program. We will definitely work with you on a first month would be spending on training you. So that is helpful. Okay, and okay, so Phoebe is here. Monthly limitation when you register for $90. There's no monthly limitation or I do not get your question. Like the whole program will run for one month only with the advanced license. Someone is able to get an additional 30 months. That is completely an individual's personal choice. Uh, individual's personal choice to go forward with that kind of training. And uh, for Amin, what are the timings? So the timing for each session is uh, at 10 a.m. CST. 10 a.m. CST is 8.30 p.m. IST and 4 p.m. WAT. So please uh, try to convert 10 a.m. CST to your local time so that you are able to understand what is it because I cannot uh, tell the timing for all the time zones. So please convert 10 a.m. CST, which is Central Standard Time, to your local time. And if you're not able to join the session, so all sessions are recorded and the video is shared with our participants privately. So you will be able to review the videos later as well. Uh, so Sashikant, we typically work with data that has already been sequenced. So we are not able to arrange for a wet lab practice session. And uh, it is also difficult to arrange a wet lab uh, session because you see now, right now we have participants who are joining us from all over the world. So if it's wet lab and if you have to do it in a particular laboratory, it also limits, uh, you know, who can join that session with us, right? So uh, we will focus more on NGS data and that is what we have our expertise in. Okay, so your interest is in food. So typically what we try to do with the sessions and if you also take a look at the courses here, so let me actually log in uh, together with you and take you through the courses. So if you're here on learn.omics logic, maybe this will give you a better idea. So please come with me. And uh, Kylie, I would be able to answer your question. So if you're logged in using either creating an account, so you'll be taken to this course part. Now, what we have done here, there are some question, uh, courses which are absolutely free, while there are some courses which would be marked with a star. So those courses are paid. So if you look here under transcriptomics, the first course, which is the biology of uh, transcription is, uh, is a free lesson. So you would be able to start learning from the very basic. So once you start learning about RNA-seq, like really learning like how, how do RNA-seq work? What are the different uh, areas. You, I think you can apply it to the research question that you are trying to solve. And in any case, you're always welcome to reach out to us if you have like any specific project idea or any biological question you're trying to solve and need some help. So I would again be leaving the email ID of both uh, myself and also Dr. Mohit in case you want to reach out to us for more explanation later on and we can help you with that specific question because again agriculture is also quite a broad topic so what specific question it is it would be very very helpful so shashikan again this is the ebook that we have we welcome you to go through this ebook you will have several videos several steps and you see uh, once you complete you can click on next and it will take you to the next part and i hope that you are able to learn from this as well. So there are several courses here. Most of the lessons here are available for free. And you can take those lessons right away, like starting today. And you do not need to wait till the transcriptomics program. 
what we will do in the sessions here are introduce participants who are interested in learning more about the hands on analysis and um, working through different projects to help them through those different sessions and courses but this platform is open for you to go ahead and take a lesson form okay so i hope that i did not miss out on any questions now let me also introduce you again to some of the resources that i think you should check out so this is our linkedin group that i welcome again everybody to join because we keep sharing many interesting things on our group like here i found this very interesting which talks about different algorithms like unsupervised and supervised machine learning and what are their example usages similarly you will find that other members also continue to share interesting topics here so please continue to join our linkedin group here and we also have a facebook page that you can find here and i have shared with you both the links and i hope that everybody is clear on the registration process if you still have any more doubts and if you still want me to go through this please post that down in the chat box now let me quickly also talk a little bit about scholarship opportunities so we also offer scholarships for students and this is a uh, scholarship is applied so that students who are not able to join this program or afford the cost uh, they can make availability of the scholarship opportunity and to do this you will have to fill out a form for the scholarship and in this form you will have these fields which will ask you to mention references once you fill out that form we will be setting up a meeting with one of your reference and depending on that what we would do is that based on that meeting we would be able to understand whether you are going to be offered the scholarship or not so it's an intensive process so if you are going to apply for the scholarship we recommend that you start right now and right away so somebody has said that some students have low cgpa okay it is okay even if you have low cgpa but if you uh, show that you are interested in the scholarship and you follow through some of the tasks that we assign you when we are doing that interview with you it is very necessary that you may still get the scholarship option and reference means that someone from your institute like uh, he or she can be your teacher he or she can be your department head uh, please do not bring your friends at references so um, because we would not be taking a peer as a reference but reference is typically someone who is Uh, teaching you and knows you and can help us understand that you would be someone who would be dedicated to the opportunity that is being offered to you so uh, please make sure that you are doing that and for asia can post doc fellow apply for scholarship so uh, we typically keep it open for undergraduate level uh, students but you can still continue to apply for it in case you are accepted you can avail the scholarship options so let me also quickly again share with you the scholarship link i think i missed out on sharing the scholarship link with everybody so this is the scholarship request so please continue to post it here let me just share it in the chat okay so this is the scholarship form once you go down here you would be seeing that we clearly mentioned that mention a reference from your college or university administration with their name email and phone number so please fill out this form to receive any kind of communication from our end and let me quickly again go back to our to my part of the presentation and we are also coming to the end so if you have any other questions please continue to post them so as we discussed today Uh, we offer omics logic programs on these and the omics logic training on these several topics like transcript omics is what we talked about but we also offer omics logic training on genomics 
on introduction to bioinformatics, metagenomics, epigenomics, as well as data science. For Arzu, I want to answer this that we do not have any typically fellowship projects available. So maybe I can go over this in a minute again. What we do is that we offer a training where if you are interested in working on your own project, you come in, you join that training, you train with us for the first period of say three to four weeks, we guide you through different sessions, courses, different resources. The next part is where you submit your own research project. So that topic is typically not given by us. You can work on any areas. So if you are to take a look at the different uh, projects that I have shared earlier, you would see that that ranges from neuroscience, from cancer, COVID-19, et cetera, to any other projects that you are interested in doing. So we would typically ask that with you, we'll have an orientation session with you as you join to learn about this. And we'll uh, talk more about that. So if you are interested, please uh, let me know. You can reach out to me, marketing at pine.bio for these questions. For today's session, we do not offer any certificate. If you're interested, uh, you would have to join one of these programs and we definitely offer a certificate for completing any of the training programs. And they range from a certificate of excellence that I have demonstrated earlier to a certificate of completion, depending on your performance during the session. And of course, Shashikant, we would be sending you the certificate, uh, sorry, the session recording from today's session. Are there any questions? Please continue to post them. And I hope that you are going to be joining us in our different groups. And I've already demonstrated these different groups to you. So thank you again. And I have another poll that I am going to be launching right here on my screen. So let me just go ahead. Okay. Just let me go back to the poll screen. I'm sorry about this. Okay. Right. So here are a few questions that I would like to learn, whether you are interested in attending this one month program. If you are, you can say yes. And if you're not interested in attending the program, are you interested in taking the course asynchronously? So asynchronously means on your own. If you're interested in a research project on transcriptomics, and if you're interested in additional mentor support. So thank you again. Please continue to answer the polls. And let me go back and show our zoo some of these slides on research fellowship right so that was the question like regarding research fellowship okay so uh Ilya, can you confirm if the polls are in progress i mean i cannot yes, see the, the votes poll, the poll is in progress you've got about 60 percent of the people voted already okay thank you so much Okay, let me go and find that out. Okay, sorry about that. This took a while. So just to answer that question, I will be after this poll demonstrating to you again how to go about the project. And typically we recommend everybody to first go through a training program because then it becomes easier to work on a project once you have already taken a training in any of the areas. So we continue to give training in genomics, as I mentioned, metagenomics, even on precision oncology. We have a session going on in precision oncology at the moment. So that program is uh, not open for registration as we have already advanced in that program, but we continue to have these programs dedicated to different topics. Like you saw that this transcriptomics program is part of infectious disease program. So it's like a six month long program that has been going on. And therefore you are welcome to join any of these training programs and then also work on a project. Now, like if you're interested in doing a novel project without doing a training, you still can go ahead. Only you would be required to give that additional amount of time that is required to go forth with this training. 
So I'm ending the poll right now. And I'm not sure if anybody can see my screen. I don't know why my screen is not visible. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, we, we can see it now. We can, we can see it. Okay, perfect. Uh, so here, as you see, is this different guidelines for presentation that we have given. And if you notice that different projects that are here, you would see that these are on different topics. So for example, this is on COVID-19. This is on triple negative breast cancer. This is on glioblastoma stem cells, which is on neuroscience. Again, different types of projects. And here is also a review. So you can see that these projects have been uh, recommended by the participants, or this is a interest area that a participant has on their own that you would be able to understand when you review the videos here. So please feel free to review the videos again. I'll again post the links and thank you Elia for sharing all of the links again in the chat box. But as we discussed today, to register for the transcriptomics program and if you're interested in learning about RNA-seq, this is the program, transcriptomics.omicslogic.com. Right, so for Alzheimer's, we have a very interesting blog. So let me also find that blog link for you. So this may take a while. And if it's not loading, maybe uh, Elia or Dr. Uh, Dr. Mohit can help me with this. It's just not loading for me right now. So I will not go over that. So. I do not understand uh, Priyansh the question. They want you to email them. So if you could just do it. Okay, a okay, sure, sure, yeah, yeah. I got it, thank you so much. Yes, so for every question that was asked, what we will try to do is email all of these links to you so that you have the different links. You can study the different links at your own pace and time. We'll also share with you a link for all of our omics logic programs right now I have a lot of links opened up so I guess that everybody would be very confused. So anytime you want to know which program is upcoming, you will be able to check out the all omics logic program link and find the upcoming session. So that could be related to any of the programs that we have. So thank you all again for joining today. I welcome you to join the upcoming sessions and hope that you'll be able to take part in the upcoming workshops as well as the programs that we have and ask us any questions so that we are able to help you work on your own area of research that you are interested in. And if there are no more questions, I thank you all again for joining today's session. It was great to interact with everybody here. And I'll see you all in the next session. Thank you, everybody. Love everyone. Goodbye.